In the early hours of August 21st, the Damascus night once again gave in to the sinister sounds of war. Well, that evening, I couldn't sleep. So I was staring out the window and my, my hotel room faced that direction. I witnessed what I think was the attack in the early morning. The target was Al Ghuta, not far from where Scott Cairns was staying to investigate prior alleged use of chemical weapons. Video then surfaced. Later ruled the worst chemical attack against civilians in a quarter century. These videos from the beginning shocked the world. And just as a human being, I just wonder how you kind of reacted to them. It was critically important that we maintain our impartiality, so it, it sometimes it got a little bit uh, impersonal. But as a human being, it's just because I've been watching those videos for months and months and months, it, it was uh, it was tragic. Cairns is a chemist by training and a munitions expert, born in Burlington, Ontario. We caught up with him in an operations room at the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons at The Hague. I come from a military family. That sort of extreme edge of science was something that always interested me. Field work also became a passion. And in August, Cairns found himself riding to Damascus and into the cauldron of Syria's civil war. So when you were looking out the window, you weren't thinking, how did I get myself into this? Of course I was thinking that. Um, but I also know that I'm a volunteer. I chose to do that. By chemical weapons is a moral obscenity. With the new attack came demands the inspectors be allowed to investigate urgently. Eventually, when all sides agreed, they were on their way. But minutes into no man's land, still on the regime's side, a sniper shot up their convoy. It's funny where you were in the convoy. Do you, do you remember where, which car you were in? Yeah, yeah for the first day I was in the um, second vehicle. That's the, um, the bullet. It's a 7.62 copper jacketed. Uh, Cairns dug out one of the bullets and kept it as a reminder of an extraordinary day at work. First emotion that went through my, my mind was anger. It was more of a message sent to us than an actual uh, assault, as it were. What do you think the message was? To try to get the UN to turn tail and leave. But you didn't leave? No. I think had we not gone in on the first day, we would probably not have been welcomed in the other region. They were, as it turned out, welcomed warmly in rebel-held areas that had been under siege for months. Extraordinary. I mean, it must not happen often. No. Uh, part of it, I think, is prestige, pride, and to be seen escorting us. Did you feel safe there once you got in? At that point, the, it almost became moot because we, we were surrounded. Everybody had a camera. In fact, one person was explaining to me that they were live-streaming me at that very moment. And this is this difference between videos and being there. You smell the smells and you, you look around and you see the dust on the tables and you see that where you are and, and it, it becomes a little bit uh, overwhelming. There's examples where small children have lost their mother and father and all their siblings. So you look into their eyes and you see that you, they don't really know what they're going to do next. And it's a struggle, as I'm sure that uh, anybody that goes into those areas has to maintain their professional limits, because you want to do everything for everybody, but you just cannot. How do you turn that off? If we didn't do our one single task correctly in the very limited time we had, then we would have failed those people anyway. Never before have inspectors arrived so soon anywhere after an alleged chemical attack. We, we want to go up to that flat now. They managed to find crucial evidence on how it was carried out. We were potentially in uh, the presence of some of the evidence, the first-hand evidence. The physical evidence doesn't lie. It is, as, it is even more impartial than we are. 
0003193. The inspectors gathered hair, blood, and urine samples. But they would be worthless until they landed intact at the labs that would study them. And those samples were the key. So it was of great relief when the, uh, the wheels touched down in Rotterdam. Uh, but it was just the end of the beginning. The samples were meticulously checked and divided up here at the OPCW lab, with Syrian officials watching. Tests from four labs compared before the inspectors concluded sarin had been used. The report came out at record speed, and the question, I guess, among everybody is how sure you are about your finding? How sure are you? I was there. I took some of those samples. I assess the situation, 100% uh, sure. So you must not like it very much if the Russians say that you're biased? Everybody's entitled to their own opinions. We did our job, we did it to the best of our ability, and uh, ignored the pressures from politicians or anybody else that seemed to have a hand in it. Will those in favor contained at the document. Last Friday, the UN Security Council agreed on a resolution to start the far tougher job of dismantling for good Syria's extensive chemical weapons program. So what's your cold scientific opinion of how tough a job it's going to be to rid Syria of chemical weapons? It's very difficult to do that in a permissive environment or a country that's at peace is uh, extremely ambitious. To do that in a matter of months or in a year in a country that's uh, in a full-blown war, borders on the unrealistic. People have said it's impossible. People have said it's impossible. What do you say? I'm going to give it my best try. Karen's heads back to lead the field teams that will ultimately start destroying the material. As I travel around the world, I, I realize how truly blessed I was to be born a Canadian. And I think it's... Um, incumbent upon me to try to share that fortune with others. You looking forward to going back? Yes and no. I think the job we have um, ahead of us is uh, Herculean in, in some ways, but I'm very much looking forward to making the effort and uh, working with my colleagues to make it happen and going back to, to the Syrian people. <laughs> It would be one way of ending one particularly loathsome kind of war. But Syria is fighting many wars. For the inspectors, every journey, every success will be historic and hazardous. Nala Ayed, CBC News, The Hague.